The people sitting in this cafe all belong to the one society because of the many things they have in common. Such as the customs they follow, the language they speak, and the food they eat. The combination of these things binds them together and distinguishes them from other societies. And, just as there are different societies in the world today, there have also been many different societies throughout history. Let's look at just one of the many groups of people who have lived along the shores of the Eastern Mediterranean Sea the ancient Greeks. The homeland of this ancient society covered an area almost the same as modern Greece. A country of many islands and a rugged mainland. Although this society flourished over two and a half thousand years ago, it is still very important to us. This is because many things in our world, such as democratic government, certain styles of architecture, and even the Olympic Games, first began in ancient Greece. But understanding how this important and unique society came about is not easy. One way is from the work of archaeologists who constantly add fragments of information to our understanding of the past. And some discoveries can change things forever, even if the clues have been right under our feet all the time. Another place where we can find information about ancient societies is in a museum like this, where things actually made and used in the past are kept. These objects come from all over the ancient world, but regardless of where they're from, one thing is clear, the environment was a major influence in the daily life of the people who made them. The ancient Greeks were no exception. This wine bowl was made two and a half thousand years ago and once sat in an ancient Greek dining room. It was used to hold wine, which would have been drunk at a banquet, much like the one painted here. The food these people eat, the clothes they wear and the home they are dining in are all a result of the environment which surrounded them. To understand any society, we need to know how the landscape and available resources shaped them as a people. Let's have a look at how these things influenced the ancient Greeks. As well as unearthing artefacts which end up in museums, archaeologists also add to our knowledge about how the environment of Greece has changed over time and their findings show that people have adapted to and transformed this land as they have gone about their daily life. The evidence suggests that shepherds have tended flocks on hills like these for thousands of years. The nimble feet and digestive system of sheep and goats are well suited to the rugged terrain and vegetation but their constant grazing has altered the ecosystem and helped create the landscape we find today. However, in some places, little pockets still survive of what much of the countryside once looked like. There were dense forests of pine, oak and plane trees and lots of wildlife including wild pigs, which the ancient Greeks hunted. These forests provided the ancient Greeks with the resources they needed to survive. And among the many different species growing here were some which helped Greek society prosper. 
One such plant was the grapevine, and some of the earliest evidence of its cultivation comes from Greece. The vines were trained and the grapes crushed for their juice, which was fermented to make wine. Poured as an offering to the gods or drunk at a banquet, wine has been an important part of Greek life ever since. Another plant was the olive tree. The olives were harvested for their oil, which was used for many things, from cooking to lighting homes, and even as an ingredient in ancient medicines. Olive trees bear fruit every two years and can live for centuries, but producing olive oil is time consuming and requires a lot of olives. This made the end product a prized commodity, not only in Greece itself, but in neighboring countries, and it became a valuable item for trade. This trade was often over long distances, and the Greeks used the sea which surrounded them as a highway to other people and places. With olive oil or wine in large clay jars, the Greeks would set sail, hoping to trade their goods for things which did not grow well at home, like grain, as well as picking up new ideas and exotic goods from the different people they came into contact with. This trade helped make the ancient Greeks expert sailors even though they believed that the seas they crossed were inhabited by all sorts of monsters and mythical beings. Contact with other societies brought in the wealth which allowed the Greeks to prosper. But to really understand what made their society unique, we need to look at the geography of their homeland. The Greek landscape of islands and rugged mountains, until very recently, made travel within Greece difficult and acted as a barrier to communication. Mountain passes like this were the only way to travel over land between some regions, either on foot or on the back of a horse or donkey. The mountains and the sea also restricted the land available for agriculture to areas on the coast and to small plains between the mountain ranges. Within this landscape, in those areas which were good for agriculture, towns of different sizes developed. Some even became like small cities. These towns and cities provided a meeting point and services such as government for the people who lived in town and the surrounding countryside. As the natural features of the landscape divided the country up, these towns developed independently because they were cut off from their neighbors. One town in a region often became more powerful and extended its influence over an inland plain or along the coast. Each town developed its own laws, government and army, and the area it influenced became like an independent country, even though the inhabitants of the different towns were all part of the one society. We call these independent regions city-states and this organization, influenced by the landscape itself, meant that the Greeks showed loyalty to their city-state, rather than to a single nation. One major difference between the city-states was the way they were governed, and historians studying ancient inscriptions and texts can tell us about the different forms of government which developed all over Greece. 
In some city-states, like here at Sparta, a council of wealthy landowners made all the important decisions for the rest of the community. We call this type of government an oligarchy. In other city-states, like Athens, the citizens, and only men were considered citizens, gathered together in assemblies and voted on the laws and policies which would govern them. Everyone could have a say, but inevitably the best speakers usually got their way. This type of government is called a democracy. Although political differences made each city-state unique, we regard all the ancient Greeks as belonging to one society because of the many things they had in common. At times, particular city-states would band together and form alliances to defend their land if threatened or attacked. And all the Greeks shared a common language and worshipped the same gods. At special sacred places, like here at Olympia, home of the ancient Olympic Games, the Greeks would forget their differences for a few days and compete together in honour of their chief god, Zeus. The victors were crowned with olive wreaths, and just like our Olympic athletes today, they received a hero's welcome when they returned home. To find out about the everyday life, for the people who lived in these city-states, the pictures painted on their pots can provide a wealth of information. At our banquet here, the meal is finished and all that remains are some leftover cakes, perhaps made of cheese and sweetened with honey. Cups and baskets hang from the dining room wall and the men recline on elaborately decorated couches. The wine is flowing and drinking games are being played, whilst the lyre accompanies songs of legends and heroes. These people could come from many different walks of life. They may be farmers, poets or shopkeepers, but all share a loyalty to their city-state and rely on the activities of others in their day-to-day -day world. The backbone of the ancient Greek city-states were the farmers and primary producers, and most ancient Greeks were farmers. They lived on small family holdings of several hectares with a few animals, a garden and some olive and fruit trees. As well as the land that they owned, the farmers also utilised the resources of the surrounding countryside for hunting and grazing, timber gathering and for collecting honey from beehives placed among the wildflowers. Any extra food or produce, like olive oil, could be sold or exchanged in town at the market. In the centre of most Greek cities and towns was a public space, like here in the heart of ancient Athens, where alongside the market stalls, the general business and government of the day was conducted. That's why markets were great places to catch up with people and with the latest news and gossip. And a lot of these meetings took place under the shelter of market buildings, like this one which has been reconstructed from archaeological remains. Just like today, the people who lived in ancient towns relied on the surrounding farms for food, but they also prospered when the farmers produced more than they needed. These excess goods could be traded which encouraged wealth to flow into the town. And this meant that a range of people like cobblers, potters and shopkeepers could live in town 
and not do any farming at all. The farmers relied on the services these people provided, just as much as the townspeople relied on the farmers. And this link between town and country is a feature of ancient Greek society. But for most people, it was the everyday things, like what to serve at a banquet or what might be available at the market, which concerned them most. Many of the foods eaten in the past are still eaten today. They grow well here and are adapted to the environment. Green vegetables, olives, onions, peas, garlic and dairy products were staples on the ancient Greek menus. And these would be supplemented with what was in season at the time. Pears, apples, fennel, lettuce, celery and figs, to name just a few. And no banquet was complete without herbs, and wine was essential. Red meat was certainly available, but it was not usually eaten every day. It tended to be reserved for special occasions and religious festivals. For those who lived near the coast, the sea was a rich natural resource and it provided a bountiful harvest, making fish and octopus popular items on the menu. These natural resources which were available to the ancient Greeks helped shape their world. The stonemasons who quarried the local limestone to build this temple and the builders who constructed it belonged to a unique society. But what was it that made them unique? Was it their skill in mastering their natural resources, especially the grapevine and the olive tree, which brought in the wealth which allowed them to prosper? Or was it because the sea and the mountain ranges divided them up, resulting in a unified society which was made up of very independent city-states? The issues are complex, but at whatever level we look, the environment played a fundamental role in shaping ancient Greek society. And what was true in the past is just as true today. These modern Greeks still respond to the environment which surrounds them. At times it can be a struggle. But they, just like their ancient ancestors, know that the geography and resources of Greece can make it a very good place to live. <laughs> 